Thank you for tuning in to the worship service of Union Chapel Missionary Baptist Church under the leadership of Dr. Owendell Davis. We are located at 315 Winchester Road in Huntsville, Alabama. The worship service begins at 9 a.m. every Sunday via Facebook, YouTube, and Boxcast. We pray that you will join us as we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. The mission of Union Chapel Christian Academy is to educate students spiritually, academically, socially, and physically. Our educators instill leadership while striving to teach the fundamentals of reading, science, math, art, music, and technology so that every student leaving the academy will be prepared to impact the world for Jesus Christ. If you would like to be a part of this Christ-centered foundation, please contact us today. Good morning. My name is Thurman Miles Flowers. I'm one of the associate ministers here at Union Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And on the behalf of Pastor Davis and the whole entire church, we'll welcome you to our live screen service on today. We pray that something that will be said, something that will be did, will be inspiration to you so you can be able to go a little bit further in believing in the Word of God and to be able to have a little bit more faith in Him. As we continue to celebrate black history on this month, let us also be mindful, even though February is to set aside for Black History Month, but it's not the end of the Black History Month on today. So we continue to embrace all our past so we can be able to have a better benefit for our future. Now we're going to lead to our morning devotion by Deacon Andrew Biddle. He can come and lead us in scripture and prayer. Hear ye, word of God. Good morning. Our scripture will be coming from Philippians 4, 4 through 9, the King James Version, Philippians 4, 4 through 9. And it reads as follows. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do and the God of peace will be with you. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers and doers of his holy word. Shall we go to the throne of grace? Oh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you right now. We thank you for your mercy and your grace because it suits our case. We thank you for another day that we have not seen before. We thank you for your son, Jesus, for dying on the cross for our sins that we may have the right to the tree of life. Oh, Lord, as we come this morning, we thank you for strength and reasonable health. We thank you for just being God being God all by yourself. We thank you for those that's on this line, Lord, this live line, Lord, wherever they're from, Lord. Oh, Lord, we thank you for our pastor and his family, Lord. We ask that you just continue to bless and strengthen him. Oh, Lord, as a, a minister, uh, Thurl Miles, continue to bring your word that you will bless him and strengthen him. You touch him from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet that he will bring your word and may we apply your word to our lives, Lord. Oh, Lord, we're living in perilous times. And such a time as these, we look to you, the author and finisher of our faith. Oh, Lord, we don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know you hold it in your hand. And we say thank you. Oh, Lord, I thank you for the prayers of the righteousness, the prayers of Union Chapel for praying for my sister Rosie's eye surgery. 
Oh, Lord, we pray that you continue to strengthen her and heal her body, Lord. Oh, Lord, we pray for my sister D. Lord, Lord, that was in the hospital, that she's home now, but we're lifting up holy hands, saying thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, Lord, bless my family, Lord, and all those families, Lord, that seeking your face. Bless this world, Lord, that uh, those that's homeless and and those that do not have, Lord, that you will provide for them. Send somebody their way. Oh, Lord, that you just strengthen and comfort those that lost their loved ones in such a time as these during this COVID-19, that you will get the glory when it's all said and done. We praise your holy name. Oh, Lord, if the old world was used to say if we hit a thousand tongues, we couldn't thank you enough. Lord, we press on. And we pray that you'll continue to comfort us and strengthen us, Lord. Keep us in your care. Oh, Lord, when it's your turn to call and ask the answer, Lord, leave us a place. Let us be in your presence where we can look upon your face forevermore. And you can say, well done, that true and faithful servant. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We praise your holy name. Those that continue to struggle with anxiety and in issues, Lord, you intervene. That you just continue to strengthen them. And Lord, as we go along our way, as we walk and talk, as we stay at home, bless those that's going through some issues that uh, can't see their friends, their loved ones. You give us peace that surpasses all understanding. And we forever praise your holy name. We thank you. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. amen.
Welcome to Union Chapel's live stream service on Facebook, YouTube, and BoxCast. Please listen closely to our upcoming announcements. Registration for the Union Chapel Christian Academy 2021-2022 school year is now open. Applications are available for students in pre-K through sixth grades. Additional information is available online or you may contact the Academy at 256-489-4728. Enroll today. Union Chapel is excited to announce additional Sunday school classes beginning March 7th. There will be four Sunday school classes conducted via Zoom to include adults, collegiate and young adults, 9th through 12th grades, and 5th through 8th grades. Sunday school books are available at the church for youth and adults. We encourage you to get your children involved in the weekly Sunday school classes. Please refer to the church website Sunday school link for respective Zoom information. For additional information or questions, please contact Deacon Jacoby Berry or Brother Melvin Felton. Union Chapel will serve 300 hot lasagna lunches to the public on Saturday, March 7th at 315 Winchester Road, beginning at 12 o'clock noon. To ensure social distancing, members of the public will remain in their vehicles for drive through pickup service. Lunches will be distributed on a first come, first served basis. If you would like to volunteer for this service project, please contact Minister Marquise Thompson or Sister Candace Howell. The COVID vaccine is now available to ages 65 to 74. Additionally, the following groups are eligible. Corrections officers, food and agriculture, post office, manufacturing, grocery stores, public transit, child care and education. Frontline medical workers, first responders, and anyone over age 75 continue to be eligible as well. For additional information, please visit www.alabamapublichealth.gov backslash COVID-19 vaccine, or you may call the Madison County Health Department or Huntsville Hospital. Veterans age 65 and up may sign up for the COVID vaccine at the Huntsville VA Clinic, 500 Markaview Road, Northwest in Huntsville. You may also register at 256-533-8477. Please provide your last name and the last four digits of your social security number. Remember to join the Union Chapel Churchwide Prayer and Meditation each weekday at 12 o'clock noon. We also encourage you to invite your family and friends to join us. In addition to the Churchwide Prayer and Meditation, members are encouraged to call in to the morning devotion beginning at 6.30 a.m., evening prayer beginning at 7 o'clock p.m. each weekday, and Saturday morning prayer beginning at 8 o'clock a.m. If you or a family member have any COVID-19 symptoms, including but not limited to fever, cough, or difficulty breathing, we encourage you to get tested. There are several testing locations throughout the city. The Fever and Flu Clinic, located at 120 Governor's Drive Southwest, open Mondays through Fridays, 9 o'clock a.m. till 5 o'clock p.m. Urgent Med Care, located at 12287 U.S. Highway 231-431 in Meridianville, Alabama. Open Mondays through Fridays, 8 o'clock a.m. to 7 o'clock p.m. and on the weekends, 9 o'clock a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. All by appointment only. Please register at www.urgentmedcareonline.com. If you are in need of counseling services, please contact us on our 24-hour counseling line at 256-509-9096, or you may contact the church office. All areas of the church remain closed until further notice. 
The church office accepts calls 8 o'clock a.m. to 4 o'clock p.m. Mondays through Fridays. For additional assistance, you may also contact your assigned deacon. Union Chapel offers several options to give. You may mail your tithes and offerings to 315 Winchester Road Northeast, Huntsville, Alabama, 35811. Online giving at www.unionchapel-hsv.org, then click on the Give button. We also offer text to give. Text 73256. In the message, type UNION CHAPEL in all caps, then enter the amount you would like to give. For Cash App, enter the Cash App name, dollar sign, UCMBC Give. Please be sure to annotate your first and last name. This week's bereavements are as follows. Sister Ursula Yvonne Smith, the sister of Brother James Smith, passed on Wednesday, February 24th. Royal Funeral Home has been entrusted with the final arrangements. Sister Beverly Holyfield, the wife of Brother Rodney Holyfield, passed on Monday, February 22nd. Funeral services will be held at 1 o'clock p.m. on Sunday, March 7th in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. We encourage you to visit the church's website for more detailed announcements and employment opportunities. Please continue to pray for all sick, shut-in, and bereaved families. Remember to be wise separate and sanitize. We thank you for joining us in this worship experience and we pray that the rest of our service is a blessing to you. Please govern ourselves according to those announcements with one additional announcement as we're coming up on our first Sunday for communion uh, for the membership or, or anyone that would like to come by and get a your communion supplies, please come by the church office uh, doing regular business hours to pick up your communion supplies. As we go into this season that we are going through this pandemic, we know we have so much to be grateful for as well as so much to be in prayer for because prayer is always in order. As you heard the announcement, all the things that's going on here at the church and our community, as well as going through the bereavements of our families, our loved ones, our membership, as well as our extended family. It is prayer time right now. As we go into prayer, let us be mindful um, that prayer is always in order because God said that we should always pray for one another. Let us pray right now. Eternal gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you, Lord, knowing that we cannot do anything without you. We ask that you would just continue to bless us, Lord, as we go through um, this season of this pandemic, even though the numbers are going down, Lord, but it's still a serious virus that's out there. As we know that we are doing everything that uh, we're possible that human hands can do, Lord, but we know that you are the one that is ultimate in control. Even though the, the, the shots are available to us, but it's known that they're short of supplies, Lord, but we know that you in your way, in your way, in your time, that you're gonna be able to provide because we're leaning and depending on you. We're not leaning and depending on any doctors or any nurses or any vaccination. We're leaning and depending on you. Even though there's healing through medicine, Lord, because we just know that it is your power that heals us. Now, Master, we ask that you just be with us as we go into this uh, worship service, Lord, as our service stand before our peoples, Lord, we ask that you just give a word upon high, Lord, so when we leave this place, as we leave this live screen service, Lord, that we'll be better than what we are when we first tune in. Now, with all we act that you just be with all the bereaved families right now, Lord. We know that they'll need you right now. As we heard the announcement, those on this week, as well as those are in the past, Lord, we act that you just comfort them in the time of their loss, knowing that you are the one that can able to, to comfort them in their loss. Now, may I touch the sick and the shut in, Lord, as the list continue to grow longer and longer each and every week. We act that you just bless them right now. Bless the caretakers of them, Lord. Bless the hospitals and the nursing home and all the, the medical facilities, Lord, that's, that, that's called by your name to be able to, to treat them. We ask that you just give them strength, give them encouragement, let them know that you have never leave them nor forsake them because your word have always said that you're always gonna be there with them. 
even though sometimes it feels like uh, they're, they're alone, Lord, but they're never alone because you are always there. So let your Holy Spirit continue to be invoked in their spirit so they'll be able to know, feel your presence, and to know who you really are. Now bless us all as we continue to do your way, knowing that there's not no perfect church, there's no perfect pastor, there's no perfect leadership, no membership, but we do serve a perfect God, and you are the one that we're serving. So open up our hearts and our minds to be able to receive what you have in store for us today. Now this is our servant prayer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you, God keep you in perfect peace. As we continue in this worship experience, as we know, um, we're not here physically, but we're here live screen, and we still have the, um, the obligation to be able to give. And these are the things that we talked we talk about earlier about the four ways of giving. You can mail in your tithes and your offering, or you can give it online, or you can even text it or give it through the cash app. So whatever you feel comfortable in doing, please give according to how God have prospered you. And when you give according to the scripture that you're going to truly be blessed. In Malachi 3, it says, Will a man rob God? And how do he rob God's and tithes and offering? And if you, he said, and God goes on and continue to talk about, and that if you continue to do what he asks you to do, he said he'll open up the windows in heaven and pour you out a blessing that you were not able to be able to receive. So I'm asking you right now to give according to what God has prospered you to give in order to be blessed by God. Amen. God bless you as you look at our screen, um, the four ways of giving as well as going through our worship service. Then we'll come back and give a word upon God. Amen. Sometimes, how many of y'all got a few? 
like you said, I got one more verse. I get mistreated sometimes. Oh, my way home. I get mistreated sometimes. Oh, my way home. I get mistreated sometimes. Oh, my way home. But I'm counting on you. Please, Lord. Come on, Deacon White.
stop this. Fix the deal. Fix the deal. Amen. Let us pray. Turn to gracious heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to be in your presence. Now, Lord, as you know that the songwriter just got through singing, you know that you can fix it, Lord, whatever is we are dealing with, Lord. You can fix sickness, you can fix heartache, you can fix pain. Now, we ask that you would just fix it, whatever we are dealing with in our spiritual walk, in our physical walk, in our emotional walk we act that you just fix it right now now lord as we come to this moment of ministry time lord we act that you would just continue to bless our servant as he stand before thy peoples to be able to give a word upon high to be able to know that it is not i but it is you lord that we should be looking as we look into the hills we're coming our help knowing that our help come from you who creator of the heaven and earth and we ask that you just bless us all as we continue to do your way and your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. First, giving reverence to the Almighty God, to Pastor Davis, Sister Davis, in their absence, to all the, the leaders of this church, as well as to all the membership and those who are here on live screen serve. It is indeed an honor and a pleasure to be able to come before you, to be able to give a word of encouragement to all those who are here. I'd like to thank Pastor Davis for his opportunity to be able to come and stand on this morning to be able to deliver a message that God has sent from, to us through me to be able to preach the word of God. With that in mind, the word of the Lord comes from the book of Mark. Mark chapter 5, begin at verses 1 through 10, and I will be reading out the NIV translation of the Bible. Mark chapter 5 beginning at verses 1 through 10. And it reads, They went across the lake to the region of the Gazareers, and when Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an impure spirit, and the King James said an unclean spirit, came from the tomb to meet him. This man lived in the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore. Even not even with a change. For he had often been changed hand and foot, but he tore the change apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees and in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, what do you want with me, Jesus, the son of the, my, of the high, most high God? In God's, name, in, in God's name do you torture me? For Jesus had said unto him, come out of this man, you impure spirit. Then Jesus answer him, what is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. That's concluded the word, the word of God. For a subject this morning, I'd like to use the subject, don't get stuck in your past. Don't get stuck in your past. As we used to gather here physically, face to face. We all come to the church to be able to worship him in spirit and in truth, to be able to come to our Sunday school, our midweek Bible study. But now things have changed now since of this pandemic. We are now, we're doing everything by Zoom. We're doing everything by MS Team. We're doing everything by 
Facebook Live and all other social medias of live stream. But the word of God still have to go forth. Looking at us, we, regardless of how long we have been in church, and regardless of how many positions that you hold, or how long you, 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 you've been in this ministry, or how long you've been, been, been attending churches, and in every capacity to them, we all have a past. There's no one at, at the sound of my voice does not have a past. And there's some passes in our lives that's not pleasant uh, that we have. Some things that, that we're going to have to just deal with for the rest of our lives. But I know there are some Christians that's out there. I know we have some of these super duper Christians that, that never did anything wrong, never had a pad. The ones that walk around here with these, the, 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 these red capes on and these blue tights on with this super um, C upon their chest saying, I'm, I can leap over tall buildings of sin. And I, 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 I'm faster than any speed and lie. I know that there are some people that's out there think that they're better. But I'm here to tell you, my brother, so the scripture said that all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. So there's no one exempt from sin. There's no one exempt from their past. There's no one exempt from, from, from the things of this world because all have sinned. And when you look at this chapter, when you look at this chapter, Mark chapter 5, it, it has three um, dispositions in this, this particular book. It is the demon-possessed man, the diseased woman, as well as uh, uh, the, 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 the deaf uh, girl. In chapter 4, we, 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 we have to tie chapter 4 into chapter 5 because it started in chapter 4 when the disciples and Jesus were in the boat facing a storm. When, when Jesus was, was down in the bottom of that ship, began to go to sleep, and the, and the disciples woke him up when he stood up on the, on the mast of that ship and he said, Peace be still to the storm, and the winds and the waves began to cease. And the question came from the disciples said, What matter of man is this? that the wind and the wave even obey him. And then we come to chapter 5 and begin to answer that question. As they begin to come out of the when Jesus began to come out of this boat, he walked into this graveyard, he walked into this cemetery, and he saw a man that was demon-possessed. When you look at the scripture, it says that the Bible described this man was an unpure spirit. King James said an unclean spirit. He lived in a tomb Often he was changed with hand and foot, but, but, but he tore the change apart, and night and day he cried out and cut at himself with stones. This man was demon-possessed. When you look at him, he was demon-possessed that the demon was overtaking his body and overtaking his thoughts and mind. But look at this. It says that the demon-possessed, even as a demon-possessed, look what he did. He even acknowledged who Jesus was. Let's let me know that it, I don't care how, how people act, I don't care how they, they say that they don't know Christ, I don't care how they say it's not a God, I don't care how they say that, they, that we just existed to be existing through theory, but they always acknowledge that it is a God some way and somehow. It says, look in verse 6, it says that when he saw Jesus from a distance, I mean he, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. And the King James said he fell and worshipped him and who is. So even though he was demon-possessed, even though he was demonic, he still worshipped the Lord because in spite of what goes on in his life, he acknowledged who Christ really is. And my brothers and sisters, we got to acknowledge Christ in our demon-possessed situation. When we're dealing with stuff of this world, when we're dealing with sin that, 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 that's not of God, when we're dealing with all these things that, that, that pull us away from God, we got to acknowledge that God is just not a far off, but he's closer than what we think we are. When you look at this man, this man, this demon-possessed man, he said he shouted at the top of his voice. He said, said what do you want? to do with me, Jesus. See, he, he having a conversation with us. Keep in mind, prior to this, nobody can tame him. Nobody can bound him. Every time they put him in a chain, he break the chain. Every time they try to do this, they break it. There was no man strong enough to even attain him, to be able to hold this man down, because he was stronger than any human but look what he having. He's having this conversation with Christ and say it with an intelligent conversation, that, uh, if, I, if I may add. He said, what do you want with me, Jesus, 
son of the most high God. Oh, man, that, 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 that just really got me right there. That really, that, that really just got me all, all bubbly inside. That even though no human can, can, put, can attain this man, but God have all authority. And Jesus never said anything to him prior to this. He acknowledged who God really is and how much power in God. Even the demons know who God is. Even though demons know the power of God. So when you talk about your past, I know we got a lot of people always dealing with their past. I know a lot of people always talking about, uh, I would have been this, I would have been that, if it had not been for this, if it had not been for that. Well, I'm here to tell you, my brothers and sisters, stop thinking about or dwelling on stuff that could have, would have, should have, and dwell about what, what's going to be about. If you are a child of God, if you know who Christ really is, that he said that eyes have not seen. And he said that ears have not heard. And he said it had not even entered into the heart of man what God has in store for us. So won't worry about your past. Because all of us got a past that we're not proud of. But God said, I'm not looking in your past. I'm looking at your future. Because your future is, is, is bright. Your future is, is, is what I am. Because if you know who I am, you continue on. Look what it, and look what it goes on. Jesus, Jesus speak to this demon within. He didn't speak to the man. He speak to what is possessing this man within. He said, Jesus said, and said that um, to, the, to, the, to the demon possessed, he says that come out of this man, you unpure spirit. Jesus spoke it directly to him. So you're going to speak about anything in your life, you got to speak it directly. You got to be specific in what you're speaking to. You just can't just speak in general. You got to speak, if it's sickness in your body, you got to speak it directly. Say, sickness, come out of my body. If you're dealing with cancer, if you're dealing with whatever you're dealing with, with this COVID, with this, you got to speak it directly. And God said, if it's his will and his way, it'll come out of you. I'm here to tell you, and when the demons came out of him, Jesus never talked back to the man. Jesus, now he's speaking to directly to the demons. He said, and Jesus said, what is your name? Like Jesus didn't know his name. Jesus know it all. Jesus said, he said, and the, and the, and the demon said that my name is Legion. He said, and we, and he added this little extra stuff. and said, for we are many. That let me know that this man was possessed not only just one demon, he had a, a legion of demons inside of him. And Jesus speaking to that demon, he began to speak unto him and said that, okay, I know you're a man. I know it seemed like it, it seemed like I'm outnumbered, but I'm here to tell you that I am in the majority because I'm God. My brothers and sisters, whatever you're dealing with in life, whatever is bounding you up in life, if you just give it over to Christ. He will unbound you. He will bring it out of you. And he'll, he'll release it from you, and he'll speak to that particular thing that bound you up once again, and then he'll be able to know that you have been set free. I'm here to tell you that once Jesus saved this man, he says that, that, that once he began to save this man, he began to he continue to read in the chapter. He said, all the peoples around heard what Jesus had done and began to get afraid. I'm here to tell you, man, my brothers and sisters, that, that if Jesus have done anything in your life, and Jesus have delivered you from anything from your past, that people are going to be afraid of who you are now because you are a child of God. Because when you walk into a room, the spirit of God is all over you. When you, when you speak with, with authority, you don't have to speak with, with, with a mindset of, of afraid of, of how people are afraid of you. You got to speak that I'm confident and I'm a child of God on who I am and whom I am. And people won't, won't, won't come with that foolishness. People, I know people always try to bring up your past. I know people always trying to tell you what you used to do and what, how you used to act and how you used to behave. But I'm here to tell you, don't let them people put that dark cloud over your head. Don't get stuck in your past because it's just like driving. I don't know about you, but when you're driving, I travel a lot sometimes. And, and, and when you're just like driving, the windshield is bigger than the rearview mirror. And when you look in the rearview mirror, you see things in your past, and every now and then it get, it, it's about this size. And all of a sudden it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And forward, no, it disappears because it's in your past. Because I'm here to tell you, if you keep on driving forward, the windshield, the things that look smaller in the windshield, but if you keep on traveling, it gets larger and larger and larger. And it's Jesus Christ standing right there with his arms wide on because he said, I'm the one that delivered you from your past. 
So don't get stuck in your past. Don't worry about what folks used to say about. Don't worry about those nicknames. Don't worry about those things that you did. Because God said, keep on marching up the King Highway because I am an overcomer. Because I have overcome this world. Because when I went to Calvary, I died for you. And because I died for you, that you can live for tomorrow. Because he rose on the third appointed morning with all power in the head. Because I'm here to tell you, my brothers and sisters, don't let your past mess up your future. Don't, don't, don't worry about you came from a single parent home. Don't worry about you grow up in the project. Don't worry about all these things. Look to God. Look into the hills with coming your help. Knowing that your help comes from the Lord, that who created the heaven and earth, because he is the one that guided you. He is the one. So stop having these pity parties. Stop having these parties man, that my daddy one day, my mama one day, man, that I was raised up by, by, by my grandparents. Don't worry about this thing. Let them know that God got you. And he brought you through. When he's going to bring you through it, he's going to continue to bring you where you need to go. But I'm here to tell you, my brothers and sisters, don't get stuck in your past. Because God said, I got a future for you. Future of plenty. Future of greatness. So be, as we celebrate this black history, as we go into this climax of this black history, knowing that our foreparents have died in order for us to have the freedom to vote. The freedom to go in the front door, the freedom to go and eat at, 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 at restaurants, the freedom to have jobs, even though the struggle not over. But it has been, been, been paved in ways so we should be able to stand on the shoulders of giants and see a little bit further, not dwelling on our past, embracing our past and holding on to our future because this is what God have us to do. So don't get stuck in your past. Keep on marching up the King Highway. And as the old warrior says, and see what the end's going to be. I'm going to be focused on what God has in store for me, not stuck in my past. God bless you. God keep you in perfect peace. Don't get stuck in your past because God got a future in store for you. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you. God keep you. It's the word of God. This is Christmas discipleship. It's being extended. To whosoever will, let them come. Knowing that we're not here physically, but you're still here. The spirit of God is everywhere at the same time. And there's a head of your house, so if you go into them and say, I would like to be saved, uh, the Lord has been pricking on my heart. The Holy Spirit has been inside of me, invoked inside of me, wants me to become saved. You can go to the head of the household and say, what must I do to become saved? It is confess with thy mouth, Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart that God have risen him up from the dead. Thou shall be saved. And then you, after that, the head of the household will contact the church office and the church office will contact the deacons and be able to counsel you even more to assimilate you into whatever church you have a desire. If it's here at our church or any other church, we'll welcome you not to be able to unite with a church, but to be able to unite with Christ who saved you. And if you're already saved, you want to rededicate your life unto him, you can come as well. Just contact the church office. You can call right now when the deacons are on the telephone or any other texts or whatever other social way of, of con con connecting with them, come unto them and they'll counsel with you, give you further instructions on how to assimilate yourself. Come unto him, knowing that we cannot save ourselves. And don't let your past message with you because God got a bright future in store for you. All of us got a past. I, I like talking about my past sometime to let them know what God have brought me through. And what he had brought me from, the knowing that I got a future with him and with him alone. God bless you. God keep you in perfect peace. Now on the behalf of Pastor Davis and the whole entire Union Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, we want to thank you for tuning in to our live screen service. We pray that something that was said and done that would be inspirational to you, uh, something in the message, something in the song service, or uh, even in our devotional service, as well as our prayers. We ask that you just continue to uh, uh, look into God, to, to all the things that have. And don't get stuck in your past. Uh, don't be dwelling on stuff that you cannot change. Uh, look into the future, because God said, I have a future in store for you. I know the plans for you in your life. 
So continue to follow God's word. We thank you right now in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for allowing us to be able to come and to give us on this live stream service, Lord, as best of uh, Facebook or YouTube or any other social media, Lord. We ask that you just bless us all. Now, we ask that you just continue to bless those who are tuned in right now. We ask that you just continue to lift them in whatever they're in need of, Lord. Let them know that you got them and you have their back. Now, Lord, we ask that you continue to bless us all, knowing that we're not perfect, Lord, but we do serve a perfect God. Bless our pastor, his home, and bless our churches, and not only our pastor in this church, but all pastors and churches called by your name. And we ask this in your darling son, Jesus' name, by, now by the love of God, in the sweet communion of our Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide henceforth and forevermore. And we all say together, amen. God bless you and God keep you in perfect peace. Amen. God bless you.
you wouldn't be here. Come on, clap your hands. On behalf of our pastor, Dr. Let Owen Davis, nobody. we want to thank you for joining us nobody in this worship like experience you. to the Lord. We pray that you were blessed and that God delays his coming. Nobody we'll see you like again Jesus. next week.